Good afternoon. Today what we're going to talk about is uh, incident report writing within the Department of Corrections. I'm James Murphy and this is going to be the topic. Today we're going to look at uh, SOP Standard Operating Procedure 2A04-0002 Attachment 1. And what we have on the incident report is in the section 1 is the date that the incident actually happened, the time that it actually happened, the location of where the incident happened, and the type of incident. Now we have different types of incidences. Uh, what we have is a major incident, minor, use of force, and use of weapon. And you check which one applies. Major incidents, for example, would be riot. Uh, minor incident would be inmate cuts yourself, officer cuts yourself. Use of force would be if you had to use force against an inmate, make him do something he didn't want to do. And use of weapon would be if the officer had to discharge his weapon during his duty. Uh, and the uh, section two is the names of the staff and inmates involved, uh, the medical findings, and the witnesses that may have witnessed the actual incident. And there's a place for the name, the uh, numbers. Uh, section three is a summary of the incident. And this basically is what happened during the incident in, in plain English. Uh, nothing fancy just exactly what happened during the incident, who, what, where, why, and when. All right, uh, section four is if a weapon was used, they want to know what type of weapon and the reason why the weapon was used. And there could be several types of different reasons why a weapon would be discharged. Uh, one could be uh, inmates out on detail, Rattlesnake comes around the inmates. The officer discharges his weapon to kill the snake. Uh, another reason to use a weapon would be to prevent an escape. The inmate decides he wants to go, and you know it's our lawful duty to stop that threat. Uh, it could be a civilian comes walking out on the front porch. The inmates out in the street working, and he decides, you know what, get them inmates off my around my house comes out with a gun and points it at the inmate. The officer has to take appropriate action to defend the inmate. All right, so section four is the type of weapon, the reason. Section five is property damage. Property damage is more or less uh, during a riot, a disturbance, what property got tore up, uh, an accident, that a county vehicle might have been involved in, what property damage did they have. Uh, so there's different types of property damage that you can have. Uh, what we get down to next is section six, which is basically the warden's comments, which is actually after the reporting official signs. The reporting official is the person that fills out this whole incident report from section one through five, they will sign as a reporting official. Then there'll be an investigator to come behind the reporting official, and what basically what they'll do, they'll go through the whole incident report, and they'll make sure that all the I's are dotted, T's are crossed, and that everything's in order, that we have all the witnesses that were involved, we have all the statements, signed statements. If we have uh, medical findings, which would be if an inmate got hurt, there would always be a medical finding. The inmate has to go to medical to be checked out. Medical has to do their findings. So they have to make sure that all these are within, within uh, the guidelines, that we have everything right. And after the investigator is satisfied and the, he has all his information correct, the warden will sign off on it. He'll, he'll make his comments 
and his comments could be uh, on a use of force officers did exactly what they're supposed to do uh, if the officers didn't do what they're supposed to do then he could put in there that uh, further investigation is needed uh, and that's when you know more likely the uh, inmate affairs going to come down uh, internal investigation is going to come down if there's a use of force and things didn't go right uh, and after the warden has uh, made his comments before he signs it if there's a use of force what the warden is going to do is he's going to review a use of force video if there was a use of force video if there's time for a camera they will get a camera if we have to do a use of force and after the warden views the video and he sees that everything was done right then he signs off as the incident is complete all right next we'll go to uh, the witness form which is uh, SOP 2B05-0001 attachment 3 witness statement is filled out with the date and time and anytime we have an incident report we get a statement from the inmate that's an, if there's an inmate involved in the incident report we get a statement from the from the inmate to go along with the uh, incident report and uh, basically it's filled out uh, the name and uh, upon him filling it out he signs it and it actually becomes a legal document once it is signed along with the incident report is a legal document and that is uh, that is how we do incident reports at some County CI. Is there any questions? Staff, we do incident reports. Is it just staff, staff or inmates, or just inmates? Time has to be military time. Uh, as long as it's AM or PM, military time. As long as you got the AM or PM. The inmate is usually right to state names. So what happened there? Uh, you get the officer that's getting his uh, his witness statement to sign, and witness that he refused to sign. Okay, any other questions? Well, thank you. <coughs>